Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Baytex Energy stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Baytex Energy is engaged in the acquisition, development and production of crude oil and natural gas. The company is headquartered in Calgary, Alberta, Canada and was founded in 1993. It went public in 96 and currently trades on the TSX and the pink sheets. It operates in the Western Canadian Sedimentary Basin and in the Eagle Ford in the United States. 83% of its production is crude oil and natural gas liquids. The Eagle Ford location, which is in Texas, represents 46% of the company's entire production. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company. 589 million market cap, they're trading at 105 a share, and they have 561 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company had negative free cash flow in 2017 and 18, but positive in 2019 and 20. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was positive in 2017, negative every other year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grew a lot from 2017 to 2019, but it was cut in half in 2020 due to COVID, lower demand, and lower oil prices. This is the company's income statement. All the numbers on their financials are in Canadian dollars, but I converted them to US dollars for my Excel spreadsheet since I'm looking at the ticker that trades in the United States. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. That was lowest in 2020. Then below that is operating expenses. Then below that is operating income. You can see in 2019 they had their best year at 156 million operating income. Even though their revenue decreased a lot in 2020, they did a really good job at cutting expenses so their operating income wasn't too bad. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then below that is other income and expenses. The reason they have such a big negative net income in 2020 was a large asset impairment. An asset impairment is when you decrease the value of an asset on your balance sheet and then pass through the loss onto your income statement. This is a non-cash item, so it doesn't affect cash flow. When you look at the income statement, you should really focus on operating income because the stuff below operating income is not part of the company's operational business. So you can see they had negative net income every year except in 2017 because in 2017 they had a positive other income and expenses where the other years it was negative. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. I like to look at operating cash flow when I value or invest in a company because that's a better indicator of a company's financial health. Then you have capital expenditures which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And you can see they did have positive free cash flow in 2019 and 2020. Even with much lower revenue, they still generated positive free cash flow in 2020. So they did a really good job at managing their expenses. If COVID never happened, I think this company would have been really profitable because you can see in 2017 and 18, they were negative and 2019, they had a big positive. So I think they were moving in the right direction. And overall, they're shedding their debt. You can see in 2020, they paid down a little debt. In 2019, they paid down over $200 million of debt. Since they don't pay a dividend, they're using their free cash flow to shed debt, which is a good use of cash flow. Let's look at the capital structure. 457 million of equity, 1.4 billion of debt. 
They're 24% equity, 76% debt. And their WAC is 12.9%. And that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 824 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $700 million. We divide that by 561 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 124. They're trading at 105, so they're trading at a 15% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is much higher than me. They're at 250 a share, so they're saying the stock is 58% undervalued. In the past three months, seven analysts priced this stock. The average price was 125, which is right where I am. The low was 99 cents, the high was 159. This is the stock price the last five years, so you can see it hit about $6, but it's been coming down ever since, so it's at a really low point. This company is a really high beta, it's a really volatile stock. 3.92 beta, that means the stock moves about four times the market. The stock has gone up over 400% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 51%. The 52 week low is 19 cents, the high was 121. The stock is trading above its 200 day and 50 day moving average. About 600,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 561 million shares outstanding, 555 million are on float, 11.5% are held by institutions, and about 2.3% of the shares are shorted. If you include dividends in the past year, this stock went up 400%, while their industry went up 94%, and the market went up 68%. But if you look in the past three years, this stock has gone down 61%. The industry has gone down 8%, and the market has gone up 61%. In the past five years, the stock is doing really bad, down 73%, while their industry is up 10% and the market is up 116%. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 145%, while the industry grows 47% and the market grows 19%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 18%, the industry 9%, and the market 10%. If you invested $10,000 into this stock 10 years ago, you'd be down at $241 today. That's a pretty poor return on investment. The biggest shareholders are Charles Schwab, Royce & Associates, Neil Roselle, the CEO of the company, Edward LaFerre, and the last is Invesco. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 32, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.8, so investors are paying 80 cents for $1 revenue. That's a really good price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.3, also another good ratio. Their return on invested capital is negative because they had negative EBIT in 2020. If we looked at 2019, this number would be positive and would look fine. The WAC is how much money it costs this company to obtain financing, whether through debt or equity. It costs them 13%, and they're losing 5% on their investment. So they lose 18 cents every dollar they invest. But like I said, this is a timing thing. Most companies have a really bad return on invested capital in 2020. 2019, it looks fine for a lot of companies. I expect this number to look fine this year or next. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can only cover 60% of their current liabilities with their current assets. Most of their current assets are accounts receivable, money other companies owe them. So it does appear the company's undercapitalized. They did have a small amount of free cash flow, but they have negative $68 million of working capital. So they're short $13 million. They may need some debt or equity financing to get through the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 12 other companies in the same industry as Baytex. And if Baytex has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. 
So they're worse in PE because they're negative. They are doing better in price to sales and price to book. They have a terrible current ratio, a terrible ROE, they're high in debt, and they have a really low market cap, and they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 15% discount. This is a really interesting company because I think they could do really well. It's just that they're so small, and if oil prices stay down, companies like this tend to go out of business because only the really big companies can handle low oil prices for a long stretch of time. Because when oil prices are low, these types of companies don't make a lot of money and they have to pay off their debt. And if they can't pay their interest payments on their debt, they are forced into bankruptcy. Because the bigger companies tend to have more access to capital and more cash reserves. But Baytex did really well in 2019. So if they can mirror that year in 2021 or 2022, I think they can do really well and get back up to 5 or $6 a share. I rank their free cash flows 5 out of 10, their revenue 5 out of 10, and their ratios 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.